Broken Flowers. So this is a Bill Murray movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I consider myself among the group of people who really began to appreciate Bill Murray, especially after his kind of Wes Anderson revival. Although I'm a fan of some of his 80 mo 80s movies as well. But uh, I, I thought he was perfectly brilliant in a lot of Wes Anderson movies. Uh, where he's placed in frustrating situations, and he just uses his facial expressions to show his exasperation. Uh, I, I think when he does those kind of roles, he's a perfect straight man to all the crazy situations in the world around him. Uh, and Ru Wes Anderson has used him brilliantly uh, in Rushmore, uh, Lost in Translation, The Royal Tenenbaums, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zuso. Sorry, The Lost in Translation wasn't Russ Anderson. Uh, but it's, it's kind of the same idea. It's kind of Bill Murray playing a subdued character just with subtle facial expressions to kind of show his exasperation. Uh, at the same time, maybe there's a danger of kind of overdoing this role, uh, especially as ben, Bill Murray has been in more movies lately. Maybe we're going to kind of get a little sick of this kind of same performance. I don't know. Broken Flowers was pretty much exactly what I expected it would, it would be. Bill Murray was absolute, absolutely hilarious, but I did have the sense that I had seen this movie before. Um, <clears throat> Bill Murray is just playing a lonely old man who awkwardly fumbles his way through a lot of uncomfortable social situations. The plot of this movie is able to set up these uncomfortable social situations perfectly. Uh, perfectly in the sense that it sets up a lot of these situations. Maybe somewhat unrealistically. Uh, uh, some of the time you get the sense that the plot is being a little bit too contrived to set up the situations. Um, but you've got Bill Murray hanging out with his amateur detective neighbor interacting with his neighbor's kids, uh, just a lot of kind of funny situations for Bill Murray to kind of do his thing and mug to the camera. Um, once the, the road trip portion of the movie gets underway, however, I thought it kind of lagged a bit, and, and here I started to get a bit bored with things. And then the ending. Uh, spoilers. Uh, the ending just kind of ends unresolved and kind of leaves the audience hanging. And I am still trying to make up my mind if this was a really kind of cool thing to do or a really kind of annoying thing to do. And I'm leaning towards annoying. So I guess the counter argument would be that this is real life. Uh, things end unresolved and, you know, a Hollywood ending where everything kind of gets wrapped up neatly is not the way it is in real life. And so uh, an ending like this is more true to the way the world really is. On the other hand, if there was ever a movie that had a ridiculous Hollywood plot set up, I mean, this is it. A man gets an unsigned letter with no return address and a postage stamp that's just conveniently too faded to read, uh, telling him he had a kid 20 years ago, and because he slept with so many women, he has to take a road trip and visit them all to find out who sent the letter. And for unclear reasons, for some reason he just can't come out and ask them if it, they sent him the letter but he has to try and guess by picking up clues from the conversation. I mean, if you're going to give me a ridiculous plot like that, that then at least give me an ending where I can get some closure.